Welcome back, Shaloners, and welcome Billy Goats, or whatever Billy Eilish fans call yourselves. Yes, we're talking about one of my favorite artists, our little baby girl, our little, our little queen in training, hopefully, Billie Eilish. So Billie is in the news right now because in her, her new tour just kicked off and she started the tour with a video of her taking off her shirt. Now, I mean, there wasn't like nipple, all right? Let's not get crazy here. But Billie, who normally is very, very, very covered up in like head to toe, super baggy clothes, which has inspired me to look frankly my worst today would you like my shirt it's my friend eliza's merch shirt she's uh eliza schlesinger she's a comedian she's also starring opposite marky mark i can never call him mark Wahlberg. <clears throat> in spencer confidential on netflix so definitely check it out i love her she's such an inspiration but billy is also an inspiration because yeah like she's ushered in this kind of new fashion vibe of like baggy clothes and like Thank you. Like I've said before, I've lived through the bandage dress years. I do not wish that on many people, although it's time to bring back low rise jeans. You guys are in mom jeans, not hot. It's, I mean, keep doing it. I date the guys your age. So like, that's fine. More for me. I'm cleaning up, but I'm trying to help you. But we're not just going to talk about Billy and her like crazy out of nowhere, like taking her shirt off situation, because I don't just want to sit here and talk about Billy's body. That's really not what we do. We're gonna talk about how you can change, leave behind your old self, and shed your layers, either literally or metaphorically, and how to deal with it. But first, just wanna remind you guys, if you have a love question, a dating question, a fashion question, a self-esteem question, find me on my website, shallonlester.com, and click Get Help. Also, follow me on Instagram for some daily inspiration. I let you guys vote on the topic. One of you guys actually told me about this, thank you. <clears throat> and if you want a shout out for a friend, for a pep talk, a breakup, a divorce, <laughs> other like happy things though, find me on Cameo and you can book me ASAP. So Billy in her concert in Miami, yeah, played this video in which it's very like artsy and sort of like repeats and she's like taking her shirt off to reveal like kind of a black bra and basically a tank top, right? Now, in the age where if you're trying to Google vacuum cleaner and you type in VA, you do not always get vacuum cleaners, all right? We are but a few keystrokes away from strokes. So it's like, oh my God, she showed her elbows. Like this isn't, you know, <laughs> this isn't like Victorian London. So it's like, why is this such a crazy incendiary thing that she did? Well, like I said, Billy is known for being really covered up and talking a lot, not not a lot, but because I, I feel like people keep asking her about it and she feels compelled to talk about it, is her body image and how she has a really toxic body image. And part of that is because like part, of, not part of it, most of it is because she's 18 years old. She's a baby child. Like at 18, like I guess you're like legally an adult in the eyes of the district attorney, but you're not an actual adult. Like you certainly don't have anything like figured out. You don't really start to feel like a real adult who's got it figured out until you're I'll let you know. I'll let you know when we get there. But that's the thing. It's like, if you if she was like, I've got it all figured out, I know everything, she would be like Christina Aguilera, who took some very strange turns in her career. So Billy is going through what we all go through, body image, femininity, career, like everything in such a public way that I'm like, oh my God, I just, I just want to rescue her. Like it's so hard. And by the way, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, really? You really weren't this forgiving about Lizzo in your video yesterday. Lizzo is 31 years old, okay? She's a grown woman, and my issue with Lizzo, like I keep saying, is not her body. It's not her body. It's her behavior. I don't wanna see her behavior from a skinny white woman. I don't wanna see it from a six foot, seven inch Asian dude. I just, I don't wanna see it. It's just unladylike, you know? And, and Lizzo, my issue is that she has, negated her talent and made herself all about her body. And in a way, Billy is falling into that same trap because she does the opposite. She doesn't show her body and so people are hyper fixated on it. And it just goes to show what it's like to be a woman. You just kind of can't win sometimes. And this is what Billy addressed in the concert. So when she played this video, it had like, um, like a narration. <clears throat> so she said, by the way, my face is puffy because I had like this gnarly laser face yesterday and it's like puffy on one side. I look like Marlon Brando kind of. It's called All Therapy. It's like what J-Lo and Kim K do. I'll be doing a whole video on it. I was high AF on nitrous when I did the video. It's pretty funny, but it's going to take a few weeks so you can see the results, but I just am puffy for today. Sorry. Okay. So 
her spoken word performance said, you have opinions about my opinions, about my music, about my clothes, about my body. Some people hate what I wear. Some people praise it. Some people use it to shame others. Some people use it to shame me. But I feel you watching always and nothing I do goes unseen. So while I feel your stares, your disapproval or your sigh of relief, if I lived by them, I'd never be able to move. Would you like to make me smaller, weaker, softer, taller? Would you like me to be quiet? Do my shoulders provoke you? Does my chest? Am I my stomach? My hips? The body I was born with? Is it not what you wanted? If I wear what is comfortable, I am not a woman. If I shed the layers, I'm a slut. You thought you've seen my body. You still judge it and judge me for it. Why? We make assumptions about people based on their size. We decide who they are. We decide what they're worth. If I wear more, if I wear less, who decides what makes that me? What that means? Is my value based only on your perception? Or is your opinion of me not my responsibility? <sighs> That's a lot. And I almost have nothing to add. I mean, doesn't that say it all? Doesn't that say it all? It's so hard to be a woman. And there is like no right answer. And of course you think the right answer is like, well, just do what pleases yourself. Like you're not in the public eye. I am like a, a tiny infinitesimal fraction of what Billy deals with. And, but I'm also like a full grown adult and I am very, very sure about who I am. I know who I am. And most importantly, I like who I am. And when I do something, if people are like, I don't like it, I was like, well, who the fuck are you? I don't even know you. Like, you're literally a stranger to me. I don't, <laughs> why do you act like I care what you think? Like, that's crazy. You know, like that does, that's not to say like things don't bother me, but I don't like take it to heart. You know, it's not like, oh, like this idiot in Kansas doesn't like my body. I'm like, I don't like yours. You wanna go toe to toe? Let's pull up your profile, let's go. But again, like, I couldn't have had that attitude if I was 18. I mean, at 18, you're just like, you have no walls. You're just completely permeable. You know, like whatever comes in, you take it, you absorb it. There's no going out. It's, and that goes on. Sometimes that can go on for a lifetime. It can. I know people who are like this. They're just like a turtle without a shell. They're a, they're a snail without their shell, just like easily poked and easily wounded. And so that's, that's what we try to do here on this channel is cultivate that core of self-esteem to make us so much more bulletproof, right? There's a book that we're going to do for the next book club called The Four Agreements, if you want to get it now and start reading it. But it's basically about how to be bulletproof against other people's criticism and how what people are saying comes from their own issues versus ours. And like I said before in the Lizzo video, the things you hate in others are what you're trying to deny in yourself, right? But that doesn't really do very much for us when people are directing their bullshit and their vitriol towards us. And it's like, in a way, it's like, why should I be bulletproof? Fuck you. Like, don't make your problem my problem because then we got a problem, don't we? But again, I'm a full grown adult. Like I, I am ready for war at any time. Billy is not, she's a little baby child. So for her, this is just so overwhelming and it, it worries me. I just hope she doesn't like burn out or, or just be like, I'm not doing this anymore. I, I couldn't blame her. I don't know that I'd be able to do it for as long as she has. And you know, she's been like touring and stuff for four years. It's wild. So it's, it's just so unfortunate. It's like a girl in a tank top shouldn't be that incendiary. And part of the reason it's incendiary is because her fans are reacting and like, oh my God, like in the video that someone posted, you can hear the fans scream, oh my fucking God, oh my God, oh my God. And it's like, that's not helping, you know, like focusing that much on what she does and what she wears, like it's part of the problem, even though it's really, it's well intended, you know, but I know her fans need a lot of like love from her. It's like, you saved my life. Oh. Like she doesn't know either. She doesn't have it figured out, right? Like I, I can handle stuff like that because I am formed. She's not. And so it's really, it's kind of like a commentary on what we put on our celebrities. It can be too much. And that's why, like, if we are so reliant on celebrities, whether it's Billie Eilish or Selena Gomez or me, I love when you guys rely on me because, because I can take it. Like you, you're outsourcing your own internal compass. 
right? It's like an external hard drive. It's like, oh, this machine can't handle it. We got to plug in something we bought from China. You know, like, I guess everything we buy is from China. <laughs> we'll find out if Corona keeps on. We'll find out. Um, but like, it means I can't exist in myself. So I'm going to export my personality and my dreams and my hopes and, and everything onto this other celebrity. I'm going to project it onto them, you know? And then if they disappoint me, and then I live and die by what they think. That's why I defend them so vociferously online and whatever. It, it's, it's, it can be a very slippery slope in terms of our own um, arrested development, basically. Like we really have to, it's like, of course, love a celebrity, admire them and support them, but don't, don't offload your personality onto them. It's not healthy. But that's the minor point. The major point is what we can learn from this. And it's not about Billy's body, like I said. like. Wear what you want. Billy should wear what she wants. It's just, ugh, it's so unfortunate. People are so hyper-focused on this. <sighs> I'm really not ready for the baggy trend thing to die, though. <laughs> Still so here for it. But I want to talk about how we can grow and shed our layers of who we were and move on and reach and just transition, reach a different level. How to do this without so much scrutiny, right? Because... I said before, and I, mean, I didn't say it, psychologists say it, um, every seven years you go through a big transition. When you're 14, you leave behind childhood, right? From when you were seven and you move into your teenage years and that whole thing. When you're 21, you start to enter young adulthood. You start to think about that kind of life, leaving behind the teenage years. 28, same thing. You're like, all right, I'm done maybe with the binge drinking. I'm starting to think about settling down, have a family. Maybe not, girl, I ain't there either. So there's big shifts. And when you do, Whenever there's growth, there's a shedding. When a snake grows, it sheds its skin, right? When an, an elk grows or a reindeer, they shed some of their antlers. You know, they, they slough off the stuff. This is natural. We can't take everything with us into the next layer and the next level. Otherwise, it's not growth at all. And growth hurts. That's why they're called growing pains, right? And it's not always things we can't take into the next level. Many times it's people. You know, it should be, we, we need to shed ideas. We need to shed behaviors and patterns and habits. And a lot of times though, it is people in our life. And that's where the pain comes in. And I think that's a pain point for Billy right now. Cause it's like, it's shedding the opinions. It's shedding the caring about other people's opinions. And we're human beings, we're pack animals. Social inclusion is one of our highest top needs. We do care what other people think about us. Nobody wants to be hated. No one wants to be ridiculed. No one wants to be picked apart, you know? But here's how we can move through this with grace and with confidence and to try to be as bulletproof as possible. So let's say, let's say you're ready to move to a different level, right? You're going away to college, you're in college, you're realizing some things aren't working, you're realizing some things are really working, you wanna like move more in that direction. I've always said that like I did this when I was like, I think 15, 14 or 15. I went to my high school and I came from a small middle school, we were known as the nerd school, and I really decided I wanted to be popular in high school. Not like Regina George bitch, because that's not how the popular kids were. They were they were great, you know? They were very high achieving, very wholesome, like people didn't drink. Like we were kind of like a very unique school. People didn't get bullied. It was it was fine. And so I was like, I want to be popular. I want to be prom queen. I want to be student council president. And I told my friends who came with me from middle school, I was like, this is what I want to do. And the reactions were very, very, very different. And I had two best friends from middle school. One of them is not in my life anymore. And one of them is still my number one best friend. She was in my wedding. Guess which of those people reacted poorly? The one who I don't talk to anymore. She was like, I think you're so superficial. Had all these opinions about it. And Diane was like, good for you, girl. Great. She's like, I kind of want to like, she's like, I want to be friends with like the rockabilly group. I was like, great. And because she knew she had that core of self-esteem and girl, she's had it since she was 11. I've seen it. It's wild. And it was still in development, but it was still there. And she, cause she knew that me experiencing new things didn't take anything off of her plate as my friend. It didn't mean that I was done with her. Cause I made that very clear. I was like, I love you guys. You're my, you're my besties. Like, but I want to just like try new things. It's high school. Like I want to make new friends and like 
this is a social thing that I want to do. And she's like, cool. I want to do social things too. I want to be on track team. I was like, awesome. Miriam was like, fuck you. You're so, you're so basic. I was like, okay, if you want to keep me in this box, then there's no growth. And I'm not about not growing. You can be about not growing. Or you can say, oh, like, that's not what I want to do. And you can express yourself constructively and be like, oh, this makes me sad. Maybe we're not going to be friends. And I could have assuaged those fears, but you came at me sideways. And then it's like, all right, well, I'm clearly not going to try to take you with me into this new chapter. I did for a long time, but I realized now it was a losing battle. So you have kind of two options. On one hand, if you realize there's a new career you want to go after, a new fitness plan, you want to stop drinking, you want to start drinking. Don't start drinking, it's stupid. It just makes you fat. You know, like you want to change majors, whatever it might be, you have two things. You can either announce it or keep it to yourself. And there's pros and cons to both. Number one, announcing it. I think it's good to let people know that you're shifting trajectory because it's going to make all of your decision making easier. If you're like, you know what, guys, I really want to save my money to move out of my mom's house. So that means oh, my face hurts. Beauty is pain. Beauty is ugly before it's pretty. Look, I'm so uneven. Look like the Phantom of the Opera. I really want to move out because that's going to make your de- your decisions easy because then when they're like, come on, we're planning a trip, we're doing that, you're like, nope, I'm not going to do that. And everyone will understand why. There's going to be a path that you're following, a map, and people are going to be like, okay, that's why she's making that decision. They're not going to take it personally. I mean, but you can see if they are. And you can see, hey, maybe they fall into that category of they're not really supportive of me. They want to keep me in that box for the, because of their own needs to stay boxed in. You know, they don't have that adventure spirit, at least not right now. That's not where they are. And so they want to keep me down with them. And people do something called leveling. When they feel deficient, they either puff themselves up or they cut the other person down to their size. Usually it's a combo, right? And that's what my friend was doing. This is stupid. You're blah, blah, blah. All of these negative associations with me. I'm so intellectual. Don't you want to be friends with me? I was like, of course I want to be friends with you. That's the point. But again, if you announce your intentions, there's accountability. If you have good friends, they're going to be like, no, you're right. You're not. No, get off Amazon. You're not shopping for that bullshit two-piece dress. Save your money. Go to bed. Okay? The downside, though, is that when we make declarations, people feel entitled to comment. And we are in the comment culture, you know? Back in my day, before every, literally every single person was on the internet 24 seven, there wasn't a comments section for life. You know, you didn't post something and everyone's like, here is my opinion. And then that behavior became normalized and then that's carried over into, into just real life. People feel the need to like, just IRL comment on what they think about your plans. But that is also just human nature. You know, like the internet didn't invent commentary. You know, people, the tail didn't wag the dog in that one. But when we do that, people do feel like they get to have an opinion. Like my friend, she was like, she had a bunch of negative opinions. And I'm like, who the hell's asking you? Like, this isn't a vote. This isn't a democracy, actually. This is a shallocracy, okay? I'm doing what I want to do. I'm the dictator of my own life. I'm not crowdsourcing this. Unless I specifically ask you for your opinion and your advice, I don't want to know. If I'm making a very large, like, shift, but then, of course, it's like, well, don't we want opinions from our friends? Don't we want opinions from the people we care about? Yes, but that's the thing. You have to differentiate. Are they giving you constructive criticism? Are they giving you feedback? Or are they just like minimizing you to assuage their own, you know, inertia, basically? So that can be the downside. Sometimes you hand someone your story and they take out their emotional red pen like they're going to grade it. And it's like, nope, that's not it. So the other option is to move in silence. As they say, hustlers move in silence, right? Oh, so good. One of my friends recently lost like 30 pounds. She looks incredible, I hate her. And she did it in silence. You know, like she goes to the gym, she eats right. She's not like, I'm doing keto and I'm going to CrossFit. Like she just did it. She didn't talk about it all the time. And there was something so like admirable and like jealousy inducing about that because clearly I'm like, I have to talk about everything that I'm, every thought that comes to my head has to come out my mouth. (laughs) 
And it's like, that's been really um, inspirational to me to watch her on that trajectory in such like dignity and poise. And it was so self-contained that that also made me, that was also inspirational because I'm like, wow, she generated her own motivation here. You know, she didn't constantly need to be on the group that, you guys, there's donuts in the break room. What do I do? Like, she was generating that. It was very warm-blooded of her, you know? And so that has been really, really, really eye-opening for me and has encouraged me to come to a different level. Like, I've tried to stop talking about, like, my own diet things and working out. And it's like, I can work out and not tell anyone about it. I actually cannot. I, I cannot. I cannot. But I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. But the thing is, like, she did that because she organically wanted. She wanted it so bad, she didn't need other people's opinions and she didn't need other people motivating her. She didn't want someone to be like, oh, here's the diet I do and here's the workout class I go to. She's like, I'm good. I have my path, you know? And I kind of did that starting this YouTube channel. It was not starting it, but like, you know, I went pro a year ago and after I got laid off, like it was, I kind of got shoved into like, hey, you wanted this? Now's the time. This is the time we do it. And I was very, very hesitant to declare, like, I'm a professional YouTuber now. It felt phony. It felt like the height of imposter syndrome. And so I really moved in silence for a long time, like working, 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 until I got to a point where I felt confident and being like, you know what? I am a professional YouTuber. And there, like, there's pros and cons to that. Like, I think declaring something really makes it real you put your yes where the universe has already marked a yes and the universe god whatever you want whatever name you want to give to it the yes has an expiration date you know it's a finite offer like this offer is going to expire in your cart unless you go to checkout so if there's a dream in our heart that means we have the ability to fulfill it like i always say unless you're auditioning for american idol this is not always your dream but if there is a dream in your heart it's in your cart heart and cart and so the universe is like all right tick tock like we're waiting i've got the yes here are you going to do the work are you going to declare it are you going to believe ask believe receive to get that because if you are we're going to check out baby if not it's going to expire and i'm going to move that dream on to somebody else <sighs> it's a lot so there's pros and cons to declaring your intention and just moving a little bit in silence, because again, you move in silence, you don't invite that kind of judgment all the time, but then you run the risk of people not understanding what you're doing. Like in your friends being like, why won't you come, why do you not wanna go on this road trip? You know, and if you're like, if you're just up front, it's like, I'm saving my money to move out. They're like, oh, all right, you know? But again, you don't owe anyone any information ever, ever. You don't know a guy how many people you've slept with. Fuck. You don't even need to tell him how old you are. I, I don't. It's not your goddamn business. And the boys I date know better than to ask. It's not like I'm like 55 years old and I'm not even like, you know, I'm young. But it's like, it's just, that's just my personal peccadillo. I don't like to talk about it. I don't think it matters. I feel 22. So, okay. <laughs> Let's go with it. And <laughs> right now I feel like Marlon Brando. I look, I look so strange. <laughs> the doctor's like, it's swelling that no one but you will notice. I was like, oh, you haven't met my subscribers. Okay, they see, they can like see through time. I know you guys do. So if you're looking to leave behind a past self, a past behavior, I also have some videos on how to leave behind a bad reputation because hopefully the thing you're leaving behind is something negative, right? And very often that's a bad phase that's a bad reputation that's a label you no longer want to live so you can check that out but sit and decide mind map how this is going to go right mind map how this is going to go for you like what is a possible behavior possible outcome how do i feel about that blah 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 blah, blah. okay i'm going to choose the opposite possible outcome possible behavior also erase your instagram if you want i get i get a lot of questions from you guys because i do instagram reviews of like, oh, you know, I just, I feel like I've turned a corner. I'm a different person now. I don't know if these pictures align. I was like, then delete them. No one cares about your grid. Like, honestly, only celebrities. Like, it's like, oh, so-and-so deleted their Instagram. We don't, we don't care about regular people if you delete all your photos. Nobody really even notices. And if they do, you can be like, I just over it. I just want a fresh start. Who among us can't identify with that, right? 
That's the most universal feeling in the world. Just want a fresh start. Didn't like the picture, starting fresh, new chapter in my life. Okay. And if people don't get that, that let them self-identify. Let them self-identify as a non-supporter and a non-believer, right? We got to give people enough rope to hang themselves, okay? And if you declare your vibe, your path, say, here's my map that I'm following, let people reveal themselves. That's all you have to do to smoke out people who are not on your side. And you can say, you know what? You were great. Maybe things were great for a while, but that was a season. And every season has to change. Only keep people in your life who are evergreen. For more, click like and subscribe and be sure to follow me on Instagram at shallonxo. And like I said, if you have a question, find me on my website, shallonmuster.com and click get help.